Good afternoon and welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining me for my talk, Hacking Your Documentation, Who Should WTFM, where I will discuss the importance of technical writers in the security community to give you some sort of talking points to take back to your teams to convince them to hire technical writers or maybe to become one yourself. Before I begin, let me introduce myself. I am Elliot Gray. I am a technical writer for a software company. In a former life, I was a red team operator. Uh, I was an MIT alum in computer science and creative writing, and a cat lover extraordinaire. So I'm just going to go through real quick what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, I'm going to set the scene, give a foundational understanding of what technical writing is, and then go into a discussion of who should be doing the technical writing. And then when it inevitably piques your interest as a career, I will talk about what it takes to be a technical writer, then wrap up and leave some time for questions. Poll position question. Why do we care about documentation? Backing up slightly, what is documentation? Documentation is any communicable material that is designed to instruct, explain, or describe. The average person spends about 30% of their day just looking for information. That's about 2.5 hours a day for each workday. And this comes out to about 48,000 USD per week wasted, just looking, trying to retrieve information. This is also equal to about 2.5 million USD a year looking for information. To me, this points to a dearth of good documentation. What does, document, what does technical writing have to do with this? Technical writing is a form of documentation. It takes on many different looks. It depends on your use case. But for this talk, we will drill down into two use cases, developers and security testers. So what does documentation look like for those two use cases? For developers, it looks like release notes, how-to guides, and um, references for APIs. For security testers, it can look like assessment reports, tool readme's, blog posts. Once, now that we have an idea of what documentation for these two use cases looks like, and that, again, it takes many different forms for different use cases, uh, who should be doing the writing? Uh, I'm sure many of us have been told to RTFM when we ask a question uh, to go look up the manual. But who should WTFM? Should it be the developers? Should it be the testers? Well, for the developers, uh, they intimately know the code base. They wrote it. Uh, they are very familiar with how the code works, what it does, how to make it do anything they want it to do. This is both a positive and negative point uh, for them. Because of this intimate familiarity, they often overlook the new user experience. How many times have you gone to a, a tool documentation and realized this doesn't actually help you try to figure out what you're trying to do? Uh, another point against developers for writing their own code documentation is the inconsistency in the documentation. Developers are not strictly trained on how to write quality documentation, and so the depth and the breadth varies between each developer, and you don't necessarily know what you're going to get when you read developer documentation. Moving on to the security testers, um, the main use case I will focus on right now is the assessment report, as it is the most critical product of a security assessment. It is what helps your client know who did what for repudiation, uh, what to fix for remediation, and whether or not your test was worth their pretty penny for revenue e Not a word, we'll go with it. Um, they suffer the same drawbacks as developers in that they can forget the non-security professional experience or viewpoint. The person reading the assessment report and who gets the value out of it is not the security testers. The CEO reading the executive summary will at best think Kerberos is the three-headed dog who protects the underworld. Another drawback to security testers uh, is, is the same as the developers. Uh, the inconsistency, they are not strictly trained on how to write good quality documentation. So what does that leave us with? Well, the prominent option, uh, in my opinion, is technical writers. 
Technical writers bring a host of benefits to any developing or security testing team. Some of the benefits that a dedicated technical writing team uh, are that it allows the testers and the developers to refocus on their core roles. It allows them to do more developing and allows them to do more testing. And with this refocus on their core tasks, the task quality improves. The software gets better, the tests get better, and the end user impression of the product or service also improves. And this can in turn improve your revenue because they're more willing to purchase your product because they, they can understand what it does, how to work it, and whether or not it's useful for them. From a more security standpoint, Having good documentation uh, can lead to less breaches because your customers know how to use your product safely. And it can also increase customer confidence in that you're not going to lose their data in a breach. It also can reduce customer support tickets, uh, which I'm sure we all understand is quite the pain. On a different note, which I will talk about in a couple slides, is having a dedicated technical writing team reduces burnout and increases productivity. But on that in a second, what does good documentation actually do for us? Well, a team at Google Cloud found that 25% of their teams they looked at, 25% of them had good quality documentation as they defined it. And these teams, compared to their counterparts, were 2.4 times more productive than the teams that did not have good quality documentation. And in turn, they were also 3.8 times more productive to implement security practices. So the teams with good quality documentation were more productive and more secure. But how do you get this good quality documentation? Are these people all using technical writers? Are they all developers? Like, are they all testers? Who's, who's actually doing it? A JetBrains survey showed that 12% of the respondents said that they do technical writing, and of those 12% who do technical writing, 90% were not technical writers. They would not call themselves technical writers. Only 10% doing technical writing were technical writers. And this is important because a different study showed that 31% of respondees said that too many disparate tasks are negatively affecting their job satisfaction. And this is making them more willing to leave their career or um, being more burnt out, as 51% of cybersecurity respondents in this survey showed that they experience extreme stress or burnout. And 65% were willing to leave their career for a different one. And burnout isn't just a people problem. It's a business problem. Uh, it negatively impacts a company's ability to safeguard its data, reputation, and bottom line. So good quality documentation can increase productivity, increase security posture, and uh, having technical writers to do this will uh, inc decrease burnout and increase satisfaction of your developers and your testers. So this is all great. There's lots of things in positive for having technical writers. There's things that are negative for not having technical writers. What are the counter arguments for technical writers? Well, for one, there are more people that you have to pay and manage, and not every company can support this. But let's go back to that 2.5 million USD per year that was being wasted looking for information. With a dedicated team of technical writers, your content uh, management systems will improve. Your data and your documentation will be more reliable, up-to-date, and easier to find. And so with that, the, t the time being wasted looking for information will be reduced, and you'll have more money to pay this de dedicated technical writing team. In fact, you could pay 25 technical writers at a salary of 100,000 USD for the amount of money that you're wasting on just searching for information. Another counter argument to having dedicated technical writers is that technical writers are not subject matter experts. I will repeat. Technical writers are not subject matter experts. The developers and testers are not completely off the hook when it comes to documentation. So you might think, well, what's the point? If I still have to do some documentation work, I may as well do all of it. It's a bit of a fallacy and a half. Um, would you rather spend several hours to days working on documentation, or would you rather it be an email, if anything at all? 
Um, the most, as a technical writer, the most I interact with subject matter experts is when I get really confused or there's a completely new feature and I need to understand just some basics before I get my hands on it and try it out. So with all this emphasis on good quality documentation, what does a technical writer do and how do they get to that good quality documentation? Technical writers are trained in style guides and uh, have good communication skills such that they're able to distill complex topics into digestible units of information for a target audience. Everything you see, read, hear, whatever, will have a target audience, and it just matters whether you're part of it or not. For instance, for my technical writing job, my target audience is developers. I write so that I can make assumptions that they have about their knowledge um, so I don't have to explain things like authentication to them. I can just explain how our product authentication mechanisms work and how they interact with each other. I don't have to explain OAuth, I just have to explain how to use OAuth for our product. I don't have to talk in my job like I'm uh, writing for your grandmother at Thanksgiving or a five-year-old who's really insistent on knowing what you do for work. So if this sounds really cool, as it did uh, for you as it did for me, is it possible to become a technical writer? The answer is yes. Well, if. Uh, there's always an if. If you possess the technical writing uh, qualifications, which as there are for any job, the number one being strong communication skills. If you're not able to communicate information effectively, you're not going to be a good technical writer. The second qualification that I believe is uh, most critical is the ability to learn technologies quickly. You're often thrown in to new projects without any understanding of what is going on or what the feature does, and you just have to figure it out to be able to speak knowledgeably on it. But I will repeat, technical writers are not subject matter experts. You have to speak knowledgeably, but you don't have to be the end-all, be-all master of the subject. As for a background in education, it really depends. My background's in creative writing and computer science which lends itself well, I think, to this career and my interest in technical writing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I've also worked with material scientists, planetary scientists, journalists, other creative writers. Uh, your degree doesn't super matter. What more matters, in my opinion, is your portfolio. What technical writing have you done and that you can show off your skills in and that your ability to speak in uh, describe, instruct knowledge effectively. But if you don't, never done technical writing, how do you get the portfolio? It's like, I've never had a job, but I need job experience to get the job. Uh, well, that's the fun part, where you just have to go out and figure out how to do it. Uh, you can go online, there's GitHub projects abound that would love someone to come and document what they do. You can also just use your good old imagination for a certification that I did, the capstone project was five samples of technical documentation. I don't know what's going on with that right now. Um, <laughs> but I just made up widget company XYZ, product widgets abound, and just wrote about features that existed for this imaginary product and imaginary company. And I flavored them as for like security um, products and services because that's the industry that I wanted to work in. But if you want to work in the medical industry or the automobile industry, you would flavor your documentation towards those industries. Now, fast forwarding, you've got the job, you're a technical writer. What do you do from there? My biggest pieces of advice would be to keep up with your technical knowledge and your topics. Uh, but remember, Technical writers don't need to be a subject matter expert. Ways to do this are to read blog posts, to read newsletters and your desired industry. Um, and the second piece of advice that I would give would to be curious. Don't just blindly copy paste what your developer or tester gives you. Try it out, get your hands on the feature, get the remediation steps and find what gaps exist in the process so that you can have that new user experience and that non-security professional experience to fix what needs to be fixed or do what needs to be done. So 
to wrap up, uh, technical writing is not just for developer or tester burnouts. Uh, in fact, having technical writers reduces burnout for developers and testers. However, at the same point, not just everyone can do it. There are a set of qualifications that not everyone possesses to do technical writing. If this sounds like a paradise, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn or any of the other social medias, which will be uh, posted in a couple slides. Um, documentation, good documentation, is important to security because bad docs can lead to breaches and loss of customer trust, which can decrease revenue and just cause cascading effects. Another benefit of having a dedicated technical writing team is to ease the burden and reduce burnout and increase productivity. So good documentation is important. Technical writers should be writing the documentation. Hire technical writers or become one are the three key takeaways I would like you to have from this presentation. So if anyone has any questions, uh, there are two microphones on either side of the uh, room. And you can reach out to me if you have any questions afterwards at these social medias. Thank you. Yes, uh, to repeat the question, who checks the content of a technical writer? Is it the subject matter expert? Is it someone else? Um, for what I write, I do run by the more technical concepts uh, through a subject matter expert, um, like the, the QA testers or the developers themselves. But I have a background in security, and they trust me for the most part to understand what I'm doing. Uh, so it's usually just a more senior technical writer or my manager who runs by the content to make sure that it flows well and has good communi uh, effective communication. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>